Sharia law instituted in this country. As my brother, as my brother so eloquently said, this country is a Christian country. And it always will be. So there's a situation going on in London right now where it truly demonstrates how easily Christians forget, and Muslims as well, their own history of being persecuted and now are doing the persecution themselves. So the situation that you saw in the short video and is the fact that a misinformation went out about a stabbing concerning a Muslim young man. And that sparked up the rage that was already there between Christians and Muslims in London. And London has always, the people in England has been, had this thing about not prevent, trying to prevent Sharia, Sharia, Sharia law from coming into their country. So then the Muslims, the, the Brits came out and protested and started doing checkpoints and checking to see if you were Muslim or not. And if you, you were, you you couldn't come into this area of town and whatnot. And in an anti-protest to that, the Muslims took to the streets to protest against what the British media called the hooligans who were doing those protests. And now we have this one, this as the latest one. It looks like it might be Trafalgar Square or somewhere like that. But the point is this. Christians like to claim that they are being persecuted now. To which Christians are not being persecuted. Christians forget that early Christians were asking the Roman government to go into the mindset of freedom of religion. First century, second century, all the way up to third century and all the way up to fourth century, actually, Christians were looking for the Roman government to just let them practice their religion freely without government intervention. And that was up until Constantine began to favor them. And on a side note, Constantine didn't become Christian until post-mortem. His mother became Christian. He supported his mother in changing a lot of pagan temples into Christian temples, Christian churches rather. And he then also sacked some of those so that he can then further his war. Constantine was baptized post-mortem. It is later Christ Roman Christian emperors who then convert the entire religion, the Roman Empire into Christianity. And during that conversion, all of a sudden, Christians start believing that a theocracy is now good. They should persecute. They should persecute the pagans. There are occasions where we have documentation where there is, I think her name, the name is Hippaya, where they were persecuted for worshiping and practicing their religion, their what they call pagan religion. Um, all forms of pagan worship began over the next few hundred years to become illegal. Uh, sacrificing animals became illegal. Divination became illegal. Magic became illegal. Doing all these, practicing your worship that you were doing that is not Christian became illegal by the push of this now Christian theocracy. And that continued all the way up until you started getting into Henry VIII. Well, really, the Protestant Reformation and the Renaissance. But the biggest hits after that, after the Renaissance or during the Renaissance, was the fact that people like Henry VIII said that, well, I want to get a divorce. You don't want to let me get a divorce? Pope? Fine. I'll change to the Anglican Church, separating themselves because they wanted religious freedom for themselves so that they can then have their own theocracy in England. And I'm going to stick with England on this one since that's where this issue happened. And then, you know, uh, Mary comes back. She makes everybody go back to Catholicism. But then here comes James. He want to control his own country religion. So he gets the Anglican church. And I'm giving you a very short person. There's a lot of details involved here. He wants to create the Anglican church where he's oh, presides over it. And now he has a British Christian theocracy based on the Anglican church. And for all those Americans who are supporting what's going on in England right now, when that man said that this has, was a Christian country and it always will be a Christian country, let me remind you that your ancestors, your, some of your ancestors, most of your ancestors who initially came to the Americas, left England because of religious persecution of not being able to practice Puritanism or pilgrimism. They weren't able to practice their form of Christianity 
because of the Anglican Church. And so they left and came to the Americas where they could then practice their form of Christianity. Hence is why the First Amendment has freedom of religion in it, because 400 years ago, that's what they came here for. They came here for religious freedoms initially. Then, of course, you have people come for business opportunities and so on and so forth. But that was the original. And that's why it's in the it's the First Amendment. But Christians in America forget about that because now that they see that they can be on top, they desire to persecute other people who also want that religious freedom. Muslims also forget about the fact that the Mohammedans, when they first started in 600 CE, when the Mohammedans first came about, they were a small cult. It wasn't until Malik and Abyssini utilized Islam as a galvanizing force and there's a lot of information that goes in there, how Malik first did it, then Abyssini came after him and, and utilized Islam as a galvanizing force in order to conquer the Arab nation and then go on and conquer all of northern Africa, become the Moors, conquer the Iberian Peninsula and, and the Italian Peninsula and have their influence going through France and Germany as well. But it took them, they took their desire to have freedom of religion when they were originally a small cult into becoming a theocracy and then wanted to persecute any other religions that were different from theirs. And we still see this today in Islam where they want to persecute other religions because they are now the infidels and you must be destroyed or overly taxed and things of that nature. It is a sad thing because I was just arguing with a gentleman on Facebook who said, was saying that you can't be racist. Black people can't be racist. Black people can be racist. Racist is not just having a system of control over someone because of their race, but it is also being an antagonist towards someone because of their race. But unfortunately, the thing that the normal the normal way things happen is that when if black people ever become on top, then black people would then persecute those who used to be their persecutors. And that's the mindset that we have to elevate beyond so that we don't do that. But this mindset is very hard. And let me get back to the Christian thing about it. Because I had another person who was saying that Christians are being persecuted in China right now. It, I, so, I did send them the message that, hey, China became a religiously tolerant country in 1982. So there is religious freedom in China, but it's only to a certain degree. China recognizes five different religions. is Catholicism, Protestantism, it does separate those two. Buddhism, uh, I think is Taoism and Confucianism. It does recognize those five, but those five have to fall up under government overwatch. The government, they cannot just teach what they want to teach, do what they want to do. They have to make a pledge to the CCP. So it is not religious freedom that you have in America and some other countries. It is religious freedom sponsored by the government which makes it somewhat of a theocracy. The Christians and Muslims and Buddhists and Taoists and agnostics, those who are persecuted, because it's not just Christians who are persecuted in China, but those other religious people who are persecuted are the ones who refuse to go and get a state sponsored or state sanctioned license in China to practice their religion however they choose to practice it. They have to practice it how the government dictates for them to practice their religion. Their messages must be approved in order for them to teach their messages. And for some people around the world who are accustomed to more religious freedom, you would say that that is not religious freedom, that that is still persecution. Well, you're in America. You're not over there in China. You're here. But the claim that they're being persecuted in the same way that Christians were persecuted back in their early days, the early first and second, third century is apples and oranges because it's not the same. Sure, people are being put in detention centers, people are being arrested, but people are not being fed to lions, right? People are not being murdered on the street. People are not being burned alive. Those things aren't happening. They're being put in prison for violating their country laws. You cannot go and dictate what another country has to do or should do. You can only dictate what your country does unless you want to become the bully and then go and control someone else and then persecute them. That's generally how it works. You become the bully and start doing the very thing that you have are claiming that you were fighting against. So just think about that for a minute. And always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibrations.